flying yes. around out there. Can you tell us why? You know, he doesn't. Why don't we remember his name? I, I mean, I'm remembering it today. He's five eleven. His name is Michael Collins. He's a American former astronaut, test pilot, retired major general of the United States Air Force Reserve, selected as part of the third group of 14 astronauts in 1963, and he flew in right. space twice. But he doesn't get the kind of credibility. He was actually born in Italy, October 31, 1930, although he's American. It says La Rome, Lazio, Italy, spouse Patricia Mary Finnegan. Apparently, uh, they were married, and uh, but there's not a whole lot like there is on Michael Collins. Why do you think that is? I mean, even though he was out there, he was flying. Explain that to us. What, what, he had to okay. stay yeah, off the moon, right. but can you explain that? He, he, yeah, sure can. The, um, we had to have someone stay aboard the command module. And while the lunar module separated from the command module and then uh, fired the retro rockets to descend down and make their final landing on the lunar surface. Well, we had to have someone on board the command module to be sure to keep it running proper and then all the equipment was steady because his responsibility was to be able to um, fire the engines at the right time and head back to the Earth to make the, the trans-Earth uh, insertion, which is the bunch of amazing things that pop back in when you haven't talked about them in a while. But we call it trans-lunar trans insertion is when we left the orbit around the Earth and translated back uh, over to the moon so we could do the landing. Same thing in the moon when Neil and Buzz uh, took the lunar module, LTA-8. No, I'm sorry, LTA-8 was the one in the vacuum chamber we tested first. He was in, uh, that was Apollo 11 and the command, the lunar module. I'm trying to think of what number it was that Grumman had built the, uh, uh, well, it'll come to me shortly. Anyway, so the reason, the reason I think that uh, Michael Collins doesn't get all that much press is because the our press people, all they could think about is, oh, the first person to step on the moon. Oh, the second person to step on the moon. Well, who was the third guy that helped him get there and get back? Oh, well, we forgot his name. That's too bad because without Michael, um, of course, um, Neil was supposed to be uh, qualified in both the command module and the lunar module. So, and, you know, when we had a, the big disaster on Apollo 13, where we almost lost the whole crew, uh, they were, all three of them had to be able to live inside the lunar module for the trans-Earth insertion back, and then fly the command module back into uh, the Earth's atmosphere, and then splash down and be safe. So, the only thing I can tell you is that it was the press that worldwide that had to talk about the first man to step foot on the moon. Well, from what we're doing, I say we, uh, involved in uh, the secret space programs and all, we may well discover and make it part of full disclosure that Neil and Buzz were not the first ones to step on the moon. So we might bring that up sometimes as a subject. What do you think about that one, TJ? Well, I, I wouldn't know whose name would have been first since I believe we're all aliens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then some people don't even believe that since it rang like a bell for eight hours or however long it was, that it's not even a real planet. It may be something else. So that's a very deep subject. We'll have to go down the rabbit hole or up the food chain, as I say. So Michael Collins, though, folks, remember his name, please. Uh, you know, these guys were back born back in 1951. Or, no, they were born in 1930. And let's see when he was born. Now, we're talking now about the man. It's 50 years since we're, uh, uh, we've are we walked on the moon, I guess. But he was born October. Th oh, he was born on Halloween. Michael Collins, uh, born October 31st. Isn't that a coincidence? So he was a major general in the United States Air Force, selected as part of a group of 13, 14 astronauts in 1963. He flew into space twice, was on Gemini 10, in which he and command pilot John Young performed orbital rendezvous with two different spacecraft and undertook two EVAs, extravehicular activities, also known as spacewalks. Now, I, I'm just going to throw this in here. I remember uh, he became very important because he went out there and he helped design a lot of the suits because there wasn't anything to hang on to. And apparently, I guess, uh, Ken, you'd know more about this. 
hanging out in, with Grumman and NASA, but apparently there was it was all smooth surface. And I hope you folks will go on YouTube and look for Michael Collins due to this anniversary. But uh, he helped design some things. What, what are you supposed to hold it on to? So apparently he was uh, one of the ones that uh, helped figure out, we need something to hold on to out here, folks. <laughs> Do you remember anything about that, Ken, or floating yeah, off? Um, what, what most people don't realize is that these – the original seven astronauts that, that, that were selected, most of them had their um, almost their doctorates in engineering and design. And um, I think one of the most interesting things that we have with Grumman is that uh, we would the astronauts would come over while we were inside testing and and doing things and come in and they would they would say no that won't work I don't like it this way change it to this way so they had a first hand um, part in helping the designs of the command module and the lunar module. And uh, so they, these were very, very sharp. And, and in most cases, they had already been test pilots and part of some of the, the well, I guess, secret uh, aircraft designs. So these, these were very sharp people, and uh, they have always had my respect. Of course, I was the youngest one in the whole darn group. Let's see, I got out of the Marine Corps in 1966, and uh, went to work at NASA with Grumman, and so that made me about the youngest youngest kid on the block because I was born in 1942, and uh, they were born probably about five years, five to eight years before me. And uh, but well, the they, 1930s they, were good for these guys. Nin- he, Michael yeah. Collins was born October 31st, 1930, and I think Buzz Aldrin yeah. 30, 32. Neil Armstrong, let me see when he was born. Yeah. So right, you came, came yeah, you came out. Too. Now he was born <laughs> August, August fifth, nineteen thirty, uh, was Neil right. Armstrong. So these are babies uh, from the nineteen thirties, and I wasn't born till they were over here at Pensacola, going through uh, Pensacola training here. You know, Naval Air Station over here, uh, Naval Air Station that we had one in uh, Pensacola is still here. So you had to come right. up here to go to Naval Air Station, Pensacola, or were you a Marine here? Do you remember any of your was, days right here? Because I'm here in, in Gulf yeah, Breeze. I was going to tell you, the, three mile the, bridge. the Marines, the Marines uh, take advantage of the Navy since we were – during peace times, the, the Marine Corps is considered a branch of the United States Navy. During a, a declared war, then the Marines become an independent group, just like you have the Army, the Navy – uh, the Air Force, uh, then you had the Marine Corps during the war. So, yes, um, I was I was at Pensacola in officer pilot training in 1964. So, um, yep, I, I was following the same same path as most of them. My brother, Dr. A.R. Johnston, um, he, was, he was up for, wanted to become one of the astronauts, but uh, he had a slight heart murmur. And was was not able to be selected for that, but he was part of the design of the big chamber A vacuum chamber that we tested the command module in and others, and then we the chamber B, which is where Grumman and all of us did the testing of uh, the, the lunar module LTA eight lunar test article number eight. So um, it was it was kind of cool that having two brothers um, that heavily involved in the uh, the whole space program. And looking back over it, uh, it was quite an honor and experience. A lot of people have asked, well, you know, uh, well, you know, <laughs> I guess, why weren't you, why didn't you keep getting involved and keep doing that? Well, you know, we were involved. We did, and we helped get to the moon and get safely back to the Earth, just like Kennedy said we needed to do. And then after that, uh, Congress started um, shutting down. That's something we might want to talk about sometime is, why didn't we go back to the moon after Apollo 17? Yeah, we've been paying the Russians to take us back up there since 2011. I'm embarrassed. I mean, here we were, you know, think of the work we did back in the day. We thought we were like going to be like the Jetsons running around in our cars. But before we leave that and go into the future, uh, let's talk. I want to mention Alan Bean because I met him, and I thought he was the prettiest eyes, you know, when I was there in Houston. <laughs> And Alan's died May 26, 2018 at 86. 
Well, he was born the same year my mother was in Wheeler, Texas, March 15, 1932. And I told you, he was the one. I think I had a crush on him because he had the mm-hmm. prettiest eyes. He was 5'10", and I was. But I loved talking to him, and he would come through the bank when I was working at Nassau Bay National Bank right across the street. And he banked there. So he'd pull up in his Corvette with those black bat wings. You know, tell us about the yep. Corvettes. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. Mad, you may not know this, okay. but some of the astronauts no, got the Corvettes. <laughs> Remember that story, uh, that, Ken? Oh, I was going to jump in with Mad. You know, one, one of the things, and, and it only happened up through the first, um, the, 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 the first seven astronauts they were selected, and then only those that had been selected go on the moon. Um, I guess Chevrolet is the one that designed and built the uh, the Corvette. Um, they they gave Corvettes to each one of the astronauts that were selected for the missions to go to the moon. And down along the the fender at the front of the down on the edge, they would have the symbol of either CDR, you know, uh, the com- commander for the um, for the mission, or LMP, lunar module pilot. And um, that was one of the biggest kicks we got down at the Johnson Space Center, as well as is at the Cape Canaveral, and and even in Florida, uh, not Florida, excuse me, uh, uh, New Orleans, uh, for this uh, program they had going there. And these guys would come driving up to uh, the um, uh, the entrance into the space center, and there was their little little Corvettes, and there was a little symbol, and they had their names on them. It was really quite a the whole. America and I guess the whole world were really rooting for and and with good reason to back and support our astronauts that had the nerves and and the abilities to to take human beings mankind from the earth and expand it over to the moon and then return safely back so yeah the, those corvettes were really really quite cute and kind of nice to see and let me let me point out you, you mentioned the the astronaut that had such good looking eyes uh, as one of the the men there, I don't think I noticed their eyes as being really pretty like that. But we'll leave that up to you ladies, okay? <laughs> well, I was very young, <laughs> and uh, you he go. was very nice. Uh, somebody's tuned in here from Georgia. Uh, you uh, you want to say hi to everybody, or you have a question for us, or what? Who, who's, who is this? Seven zero six number two two six. You want to share with us? By uh, chance? Ben Pelham, uh, I just uh, just figured out how to get on with you guys, and uh, I've got you hooked up on the phone. Or are you also uh, coming through on the computer? Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, I've got to click on something here to, to hear you on the computer. This this is my first time to do this, by the way. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, congratulations. Yay. <laughs> tell us uh, what – this is wonderful. Well, tell us what your name is, and we welcome yeah. you to our concerns and our okay. association, ACLUFO. Go ahead. What's your name? Uh, it's Ben Pelham. Uh, I used to – I'm re- I retired out of the Navy in uh, 1976, so I've been around the block pretty good. I used to live in Pensacola there near you, as a matter of fact. Wow. Uh, for about 10 years I was there. Well, it's good uh, to have somebody new that figured out how to use the equipment and get on the phone, <laughs> and you're retired Navy, which I'm not retired, but I am prior Navy. I, I guess I'm retired <laughs> now. I guess, they say I'm a veteran. I guess they let me use that term, yeah. but I did most of my training you know, in and out of country. Well, uh, what brought you here tonight? Tell uh, th- This is my friend Ken Johnston that worked at NASA and Grumman, and my friend Thomas Becker. And Tom is over there in Georgia with you. I was uh, chatting with Ken, and he told me uh, while we were chatting that, that he was going to be with you. And uh, I linked... Uh, you know, I had your name and knew you was on the radio, so I finally went to your website and uh, finally got it figured out. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late to hope to to sign on with you guys. It's nice. Oh no, that's you. fine. Well, Ken, t- tell me, you know this guy Bill in Georgia? Well, I, as a matter of fact, Bill 
Bill uh, went to my website, and uh, we started chatting back and forth. And then I let him know that we were going to be on the radio uh, this evening. And he said, where, 